My most popular video on YouTube right now is the video I made about a year ago about moving out at 18 and living on my own. Gotten a lot of great feedback, a lot of good comments, a lot of people aspiring to do the same thing. Um, since then, I've made other videos about moving out and just my general advice, like what I would do differently if I were to move out, like turn back time, be 18 again and move out again. And even recently, I made a video about money advice to anyone who's moving out for the first time because these things are extremely important. And I wanna take this time right here to make this video and talk about why it's added so much value to my life, how it's changed my life and what it's done for me and why I advocate for it so much. Because even though I got a lot of good comments, I also got a lot of bad comments telling me that my advice is unrealistic or no one can move out on their own nowadays and you shouldn't live by yourself and blah, blah, blah. Like sure, maybe most people can't move out at 18, I barely moved out at 18. I really just moved from my parents' house, went to college, lived there because when you're in college and you live on campus, you're not living with your parents. So that is moving out. And then after I graduated, I did move out. So that was how I did it. But basically I wanna take this entire video to really speak on the power of moving out. What I would advise you to do if you are wanting to move out, regardless of what age you are, because less and less people are moving out at 18 nowadays. And it's more like 24, 25 years old. That's just how it is. Of course, there's some that are younger, some that are older, but that's generally how it is nowadays because the economy is a lot different than it used to be and things cost a lot more than they used to. Not to mention the fact that we haven't seen a ton of growth in like salaries at work. It's just been kind of like flatlined, whereas expenses are definitely going up. So anyway, the reason why I advocate for moving out and living alone specifically so much is because I understand one thing. One thing I wanna say before I even get into that, I do understand that expenses are high and that a lot of people don't make enough money to live on their own and support themselves, much less having furniture and having like a TV and having a car and being able to function normally as human beings without having to penny pinch every single day and wondering where their next meal is coming from. I do fully understand that. That's why I fully addressed this in my book, which if you haven't read, I highly recommend you check it out. It's called The Wealth Journey, showing you what the journey was like from my lens, but also giving you the steps on building wealth from scratch. I'm talking from the point of moving out, progressing in your career, getting promotions, learning how to interview, learning how to invest, learning how to save, how to budget, how to get your life together, basically. That's what that book is all about. And it's not even just about personal finance, it's also about personal growth, just like this channel. But anyway, I fully addressed it in my book and I'm like, look, if you can't move out by yourself, that's fine. But I still suggest you move out of your parents' house, move in with some roommates. I don't care if you have to move in with two, three roommates, like make it work so that you guys pay a fraction of what the actual rent is. You get to stack up your money and you have the world in your hands instead of taking on that rent by yourself and barely being able to handle it or not being able to handle it at all and having to use credit cards and go negative in your bank account. Like that's not what we want over here. This is a personal finance channel. But once you actually reach a position in your life where you're able to move out and get out on your own, I recommend that you do it. And if you're not sure when, I have a whole video on money advice to anyone who's moving out. Watch that video, it's gonna give you a whole blueprint and it even comes with a free guide that I highly recommend you download because it's free and it's gonna help you out on your financial journey as a whole. So, I mean, I think it's a win, win, win. Free videos and a free download, I mean, come on now, it's, you can't beat that. And here's why I recommend that you get on your own. This is why I advocate for it so much. So the first thing I learned pretty early on is that one thing all adults need to master in their lifetimes, which a lot don't, is the art of being alone. I didn't understand the power of being alone and enjoying my own company, but it really has done a lot in my life. So like, first of all, my net worth has gone up a lot since I've spent time alone, because when you're alone, you really get to think about like, what are my goals in life? What is my purpose in life? What do I wanna do? What is actually fun to me? Cause I've spent most of my life with my friends and with my family and I know it's fun to them, but like, what's fun to me? What do I actually enjoy doing? What are things that I could do by myself that are still enjoyable? My mind runs like a hundred miles an hour. So like when I'm alone, I can really absorb my thoughts. I can really think about where I need to go next or what I need to do next. That's what got me into reading books and wanting to get into self-improvement and improve every aspect of my life. I wanted to learn 
how could I continuously do this every single day and become not just the best version of myself, but how can my bank account be the best version of itself? How can I make the most amount of money in the future? And one thought just led to another. So what I'm saying is like, even if all that stuff isn't like your cup of tea, that's cool. But what I'm saying is when you're by yourself, you really get to understand yourself at a way different level because like other play, other times in life, like for example, if you're in high school, if you're in college, or even if you've just been living in a household your whole life with other people, like your thoughts get disrupted all the time. You could be just in your room chilling and then you hear somebody calling them, hey, uh, dinner, dinner's ready or it's time to cut the grass or, you know, whatever the chore it is that you have to do. You know how households are or, or your sibling is like knocking on your door, bugging you or something, whatever the case is. What I'm saying is until you live by yourself, you don't really understand what it's like to be alone and for some people it terrifies them for some people it's extremely uncomfortable but for me it's something that i've been looking forward to for a long time and it's something that i embraced as soon as i got the opportunity when i first graduated college i was 21 and i knew my job was paying me pretty well for a 21 year old like most 21 year olds don't make the amount of money that i was making right out of college so i was like now nah, i'm gonna pass on the whole roommate thing it's just gonna be me myself and i it didn't have no pets no nothing it was just literally me and it was cool because i don't know about you but i myself i am an introvert like when i'm around people i can be energetic i can be funny i can you know i have good energy about myself when i'm around people so don't get it twisted i'm not a shy person but at the same time, people do drain me. So like, if I'm out with people for a while, like after a while, it's like, all right, now it's time for me to go. I'm out, I'm rolling out of here. I could be at an event. Like people just like, unless I'm talking to somebody that I am fully aligned with and we really like get each other, like, I'm talking like best friends or things of that nature. Like people you really tight with. I'm just like, people drain me after a while and I have to, I need to recharge. Like sometimes I have to lay down and take a nap after I've dealt with people for longer than I need to, for longer than my body could withstand dealing with them. It's not to say that anything's wrong with people. That's just how I am. So knowing that about myself, living alone has become like a superpower and it's allowed me to really dial in to what I'm interested in and what I like to do. And it's added on to my confidence because when you're by yourself, you really know yourself. You really understand what your standards are. You really understand what you're looking for when you're about to be dating somebody or you know what you're looking for when it comes to friends. You know what you're looking for in terms of your career and your purpose in life and what you really want to do. You become passionate and, and your mindset isn't watered down by anyone else else's expectations or anyone else's thoughts or anyone else's doubts because it's just you that's how it was for me because I used to tell people about my goals all the time I used to tell people about my aspirations all the time and and I would get stuff like well you know that's that's difficult now like I went to school for engineering but well, you know engineering's hard and and so what I like a good challenge you know what I mean people you know like I was thinking about making a YouTube channel ah why do you want to do that for you want to get on camera so everybody, everybody can see you? What are you even going to talk about? Stuff like that. I was thinking about moving across the country. I don't want you to move across the country. Look, this has to be about what I need in my life. I wasn't happy where I was at, so I had to move to another state. And I have never been happier in my life since I've moved from state to state you get what i'm saying stuff like that so when you're by yourself you get to make these types of decisions because like had i been living with other people at the time or family or friends or whatever the case is roommates whatever i could have been talked out of what i wanted and that right there is self-deception because now i'm allowing other people's thoughts and things that are going through their head and their insecurities and their doubts come into my life and affect me when you're by yourself you really know like what bothers you? What makes you tick? What you're afraid of? When you're by yourself, you know what you want to improve in. You know what your financial goals should be. Like that type of mindset spread out over the course of years has changed my life because I was not really like that in other times of my life. I was still me, but I didn't become the best version of myself until I started living by myself, knowing I can pay my own bills, knowing I have my own car, knowing I have my own apartment, knowing I have my own everything and I'm not relying on anybody. I'm not afraid that anyone's gonna take any of that stuff away from me. I'm not afraid of any of it. I know that I have my finances together. I know that I'm able to help other people. I know that I am of value and I know that stuff didn't come overnight. 
I know that I diligently worked on myself and I diligently worked on these things for several years at a time. It was not like an overnight success. It was not like something that anyone in particular told me to do. These are things that I just did on my own. That right there will build on your confidence. That right there will get you to a point where no nobody you walk across, nobody you come into contact with can tell you that you're less than what you are. No one can undermine you. No one can make you feel less than what you are because you've built yourself. You've become the best version of yourself. You've truly paid attention to what it takes to continuously get better. And because of that, you will make other people better. And what I found is it gave me and insane, I already had a lot of drive. I already had a lot of ambition. That has never changed about me throughout my entire life, no matter what I did, whether it was martial arts, whether it was drumming, whether it was drawing. I, I have a lot of things that I'm into, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it's YouTube, personal finances, whatever it is. Weightlifting, doing pull-ups. I've always had a lot of ambition with it, a lot of purpose behind it. And even though I might not have been good at all those things at first, I kept going and going and going. And I just got better and better every single time, no matter what it was. So that hasn't changed. But when I tell you living by myself took my ambition and lit it on fire and basically 10 x it, it really did. Because when you're by yourself, now you really have to be on point. Now at the job, you really have to perform because there's really nothing else to fall back on. And I am just too prideful to go back in and live with my parents because I done messed up at work, because I didn't have my finances straight, because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, absolutely not. Pigs will fly. The world will turn upside down before any of this ever happens to me because it's not going to happen to me. If anything, my family's going to be asking me for money. My friends are going to be asking me for money, but I'm not going to be in the situation where I'm like, oh my God, or I'm not going to be in a situation where I have to move back into somebody. That's just been the mindset that I've had. It's just like, you know, a winner's type of mentality. And I just developed a mentality of like, I'm not a victim. Like whatever happens in life is my fault. If my money isn't the way it's supposed to be, it's my fault. If I'm not happy with, you know, my apartment, it's my fault. If I'm not happy with my car, it's my fault. If I'm not happy with my job, it's my fault. I chose to work here. I chose to live here. I chose to drive this car. In addition to it being my fault, it's also my responsibility to fix it. In fact, I'm the only one who can fix it. Time alone has taught me these things and moving out has taught me these things because it was a very uncomfortable, like, situation, like, it's not a normal thing to move out if you've never moved out by yourself before. It's not something that you do every day. You don't know anything. You don't know that there's a bunch of hidden costs when you move into an apartment. Like, yeah, you know about the application fee, but you might not know about the security deposit until you actually fill out the application and you sign up with them and everything. They're like, oh, yeah, by the way, you have a security deposit. You have this, you have that. We get to hold your apartment for you and blah, blah, blah. You don't know about the unforeseen expenses yet. You don't necessarily know how much your utilities are going to cost you. You might have an idea, but you, you don't know or realize that rent's going to go up exactly when it's time for you to renew your lease. You don't know if your salary is going to go up or stay the same. You don't know if you're going to get a raise. You don't know if you'll ever get a promotion. You really don't know anything yet. I sure didn't know it. But when I found out, you know what I did? I was like, you're right. I don't know. if Because I didn't get no raise for like the first year and some change. The company I worked at at the time, they, wasn't no raise. They paid me a good amount of money coming out of college. That was cool. But as far as raises, I didn't get those. All they gave me was a dumb amount of overtime. I'm talking like a stupid amount of overtime, like six to seven days a week overtime. And I just, and that made me think like, there's got to be another way. There's got to be something that is better than this. And I was like, and it has to be like, any job can do this to me. So I'm like, there's got to be a different situation. So like I scoured the whole internet. I also wrote about this in my book. And obviously, I learned about stuff like saving money. I learned about stuff like budgeting and stuff because I was really insecure about my job at the time. Because like, even though they were working me like a dog every single freaking day, I still felt like I, I didn't have job security and like they could let me go at any minute. And that really got me into a mindset of really hyper focusing on personal finances. Because even though I was making a good amount of money, I wouldn't say that I was really good with money at that time. I was just a kid out of college that just knew that he was making good money, but like I didn't do the smartest things with that money at the time. I've always been pretty conservative with my money and like as far as not spending all of it, but I haven't been good in terms of where to put it, 
where it should go, how to make it grow, and being intentional about how much exactly I want to save per month. Those were the things that I weren't good at. So it made me hyper focus on that. And it made me get a different perspective because I saw other people like that were my age or a little older, like on YouTube, just killing it, having multiple hundreds of thousands of subscribers, making five to 10 to 12, $20,000 per month from YouTube. They have their courses out. They have their material out. They have their books out. They have all of these things and they're really hustling. Like it's not a hobby for them. This is what they do. And I was like, I want to be like that. If they can do it, why why can't I do it? That was what I said below key. I was thinking in the back of my mind, like, I don't know if I can do this. But when you spend that time alone, there's no one that can talk you out of something but yourself. And I did not talk myself out of anything. I have my doubts. I have my insecurities. I have my fears. But I'm the type of person, well, whatever. If I'm feeling these things, it's obviously something of importance. So if I just keep at it, these emotions are eventually going to go away. And they did. And I won't say that I'm exactly where I want to be, but I can say that I'm very successful in my own right. I've been very successful in my career. I've been successful with my money. I've been successful with a lot of things, and I just want to keep it going. That's what it's all about. This YouTube channel has been successful, and I think what I have right here is very special. I don't look at just view count and comments. I look at how many emails I'm getting. I'm looking at how many DMs I'm getting on Instagram. I'm looking at how many people sign up for my email list, by the way. If you want to sign up, hit that description. My email list is right there. You just get free emails from me, me giving you free financial advice. Something free that can put money into your pocket. You know, I don't see why not. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is when I'm by myself, I really reflect and I really look at what I would do differently. So like I've had extremely bad leadership at my job before, not at my current job, but at the first job I ever had. And I could have moped around and been like, oh, man, this sucks. No one likes me. Everyone's against me. I don't do that because I'm not a victim. What I did was I analyzed the behavior and I decided right then what I wasn't going to do. I will never treat a person that way. And when someone doesn't get it that works for me, I will mentor them. I will coach them and they will improve. And if not, we'll have a different conversation. But we're not going to go straight to cussing people out. Like, what kind of method is that? That'll get you fired at most jobs. Not that job I was working at, but at most jobs. You see what I'm saying, though? Like, I looked at things that I didn't like, and I did something about them. And I couldn't change my boss, but I could change myself. I could say, you know what? Um, even though he sucks at delivery and delivering the information, I did mess up on this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it, and it will never happen again. And that's what I continue to do with every mistake I made, which happened to be a lot of mistakes. Same thing with finances. Whenever I saw I did something wrong, ugh, let me let me not do that again. That's something in the books. And I would take notes of what I actually did wrong. I would take notes of what my actual financial goals were, and I made a five-year plan for myself. When you have the influence of other people, that's not necessarily going to happen because if you're living with a bunch of roommates that may or may not be like-minded with you, it, the conversation could be, hey, where are we going tonight? What are we doing tonight? Or... You might still be doing what you're doing and staying focused, but the other ones may not be doing what you're doing. They might see you. And the, the crazy thing about people, when they feel less than because you're improving yourself, they go to insulting you and basically trying to bring you down. Like, like for example, pretty much all I drink is water and pretty much all I eat is like grilled chicken, baked chicken, potatoes, rice, um, salmon, things of that nature, right? Man, he always eating healthy. He always working out. Yeah, and I look good. That's right. I don't let it bring me down. Always reading something. Gosh, he lame. He don't want to go out to the club. He's reading. He's studying again. Like these, This was the flack I got when I was in college. I ain't lying to you. I'm not going to say it happened every day, but when it happened, I'm like, it shouldn't happen at all. I've never said anything negative to anyone trying to improve themselves and become a better version of themselves and be successful. Like, what what kind of mess is that? I don't play that, if you can't tell. But anyway, like, stuff like that is what you, you get that strength when you move out and you live on your own. I'm not saying that's the only circumstance you can do that in, but I'm saying you will get the most of it being alone, living alone. 
And the best thing about living alone is you don't answer to nobody. So if you want to have company, you can have company. Like I'm not saying live your whole life alone and like yourself, you know what I'm saying, in an apartment all day. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's exhilarating living by yourself. Being alone with your thoughts and making changes in your life that no one else knows about. You don't have to worry about anybody. Hey, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. You don't got to worry about all that. Not over here, especially if people drain you. Oh, man, you, it's just you, you and you. You don't even get tired like that when you're by yourself. You, you can just chill. You can relax. You you understand what your limits are. You, you can go hard in the gym. You know what I'm saying? You can do a lot of stuff. You know what your limits are. You know, okay, I'm tired now. I'm just going to chill at the house. You don't got to worry about going to the, well, you don't got to worry about going to work, then going to the gym. And then doing all the other things that you do, whatever it is that you like doing, then coming back to somebody nagging at you. Like right now, it's it's good. I'm not saying it's going to be like this forever because, you know what I'm saying, things do change. People do get married. People do have families. Obviously, you're not going to be by yourself then. But what I'm saying is when you do move out and you do live alone, take advantage of every second of it and use it productively. Have fun sometimes. I ain't saying don't have fun. But I'm saying really spend most of your time getting better that's what i've done i'm 27 right now i've been living alone since i was 21 and i'm just saying it has done me wonders it has changed my life and i'm a, a lot further along than i would have been if i didn't you know live alone at 21 i'm telling you right now i, I am i am so much further along and the cool thing is I'm able to help other people get further along. And a thing that can help you get further along is checking out my book. Shameless plug, I am definitely going to put my book out there because, because you know what I'm saying? I put a lot of good work into it and it's very genuine and meaningful. And I think it can serve a lot of people well. I think if you take a second to read it, it's only 172 pages. You know, you can read it in a weekend if you want. Or if you're a slow reader, it can take you a whole month. It doesn't matter. Like if you read the book, though, it can add value to your life. That's the, one of the things I learned living by myself is reading is actually really interesting. Like when I was growing up, there was nothing cool about reading. You get made fun of if you were the type to read. Ah, he over there reading. Look at him over there reading. Who's he think he is? That's the type of stuff that people say. Of course, I kind of watered it down and censored it a lot for this video because look, man, where I'm from, people are vulgar about it. But like, I'm just saying when it comes to bettering yourself, there's nothing that makes it make funnable, if that is a word. I don't care if it, I just made the word. You know what I'm saying? I say what I want on my channel, but either way, nothing about improving yourself is something to laugh at or to sleep on because they'll be laughing now, but they won't be laughing later. They'll be laughing now, but then when you make it to where you wanna be, they'll be asking you how you did it. They may be laughing now because they don't have anything significant going on in their lives and they feel like it makes them feel better about themselves but when they're in the same exact spot 10 years from now and you're on top of the world, ain't gonna be no more laughing. I promise you that. But anyway, I'm rambling for too long. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.